Let's see if I can do something with this hair that's happening right now. Today I'm going to be comparing the new Dyson soft smoothing brush versus the Revlon One Step Volumizer Styling Brush. They're going head to head. So basically what I'm gonna do is put the Dyson on my left side and put the Revlon on my right side and we're just gonna go ahead, dry my hair and style it as I would with either one of the tools. I am really excited for this video because so many of you have asked to see the comparison. Let me quickly put in some leave-in conditioner and I'm going to use the Brioja Rosarco Milk. I like it, it's one of my favorites, it's lightweight. Ooh, just spray that right in my eye. And my hair is damp. When I first tested out the Revlon, so many people were complaining that it was not wet enough. I don't style or dry my hair when it's super wet or damp. I style it when it's at least 60% dry just because I don't wanna put that much heat on my hair. So I will link this below when I first tested this bad boy out. I was very impressed with it. This one is my second or third one already. I have two of them right here. <laughs> and then this right here is the Dyson Air Wrap Styler. Today we're gonna to be solely focusing on the smooth smoothing brush and there's another brush, this is the Firm Smoothing Brush, which this one is targeted more for if you want that straighter, more of a sleeker look, it creates a little bit less frizz, versus this one gives you more of like a soft blowout, which in my opinion, so does the Revlon. So let's put them head to head. I have been playing around with this one a lot, just to kind of see how I like it. Let's begin. All right, so I'm gonna do this on the lowest setting with the airflow and the heat, just because they only have three options. They have cool, low, and high. And the highest heat setting is way too hot. It really burns my scalp and then even my neck sometimes. And it's just not as healthy for the hair. With the Dyson, I'm gonna do on the highest airflow, but the lowest heat setting. Not the cool, but the lowest heat setting. So they have also three options, the cool, low, and high. So the first thing I wanna say, the biggest difference when testing these head to head, or even before I started testing, with the Revlon brush, you can get to your roots, but it's a little bit harder just because the brush is so big. You can get to your roots, but when I started using the Dyson, you can really, really get into your roots and kinda of just sit there and really maneuver the brush around, around your roots, get them nice and dry, and I think that's the biggest difference so far. And plus the different bristles. With the Revlon, you have two different bristles. You have the nylon, and then you have the boar bristles, which is two bristles in one brush, which is really great. But it does result in a lot of tugging in the hair. With my first Revlon, you can see how much hair you get with a couple of uses when I don't clean it. Even with this, you can see a lot of hair getting stuck because of the boar bristles. But with the Dyson, there is no hair. The way the air comes out of this brush is when you go with the brush down, the air goes down with the hair. Does that make sense? But if you go up, the hair will go up because these little bristles, they move. Just very slight, but they move and that's where the air comes out. With the Revlon, it just comes out of everywhere. <laughs> With the holes, as you guys can see, the perforated holes, that's what the air comes out of. And regarding what dries faster, obviously the Dyson, just because you have a lot more airflow coming through, so that's resulting with a lot less drying time versus the Revlon. Even though they're both on the lowest heat setting, the Revlon does slow down a lot with the airflow as well. So that kind of results with a little bit more air drying time. And we did test them. We have this little Seek thermal camera that you can place in your phone. The Revlon roughly comes at around 180 degrees Fahrenheit and the Dyson 140 degrees Fahrenheit on both of the low heat settings. So let's just move on and quickly do this.
When styling with this Revlon brush, because I want it to sit in the middle, I'm going to take each section of the hair and kind of pick it up towards the back instead of going to the side and then flip it to the other side, kind of going towards the left, giving it more volume, but always keeping the hair kind of lifted towards the top. And then once I know it's almost dry, I kind of bring it back down and just style and give it a little swoop. All right, let's talk about it. Which side do you guys like better? A or B? Revlon Dyson. So looking at both sides, I think they're both smooth and they both have a good amount of volume that I want. The Revlon side, as you can see, it's a little bit more volumized and more separated towards the bottom. A lot more layers are showing through, they're peeking through, it's not as smooth towards the bottom versus the Dyson my hair looks a little bit more fuller, it looks a little bit more smoother, and a little bit more sleeker. I think my hair towards the top looks really good on both sides. It's not as frizzy at the top. I think it's a little bit more smoother and more sleeker on the Dyson side versus the Revlon just because you do have the different bristles in play. Let's talk about the cons and pros for both. So the pro for the Revlon is the price. The price is phenomenal. It's very budget friendly. I believe I bought this for like $55 in Target and Amazon. And a lot of the times Alta will have a sale, Target will have a sale and Amazon as well. So keep a lookout for that. I bought my mom one. I think my sister Karina has I think one or two. My older sister also has one. A lot of my family and friends have this Revlon tool and they all love it. The only thing I know a lot of people say, and myself, is because it does have the boar bristles, the hair can get stuck and it can rip out your hair. Let me quickly show you my original one. <laughs> I haven't cleaned this one out. I don't remember the last time I cleaned this and I haven't used this one in a long time, but I wanted to show you guys what it looks like if you don't clean it after maybe like four to five uses. It does pull out quite a bit of hair. I try not to let my Revlon brush get that much hair in this, so I clean it quite often. So I'll just take my finger with my nails and just take the hair out like this. It takes me like maybe a couple of minutes if I wanna be really precise, but it's very easy to clean and I do try to clean it after every single use when I do use it, but you do get quite a bit of hair that comes out. I am prone to shedding because I do have blonde hair and I do color it quite often, so I am prone to a little bit breakage and a little bit of shedding. It's just the type of hair that I have. And as you can see, I have a lot of baby hairs. It's a lot of new growth coming out. But with the Dyson, because the brush is designed the way it is and it only has the one type of bristles, which is I think the nylon, it keeps it nice and separated and it smooths it really nicely. So in regards to comfortability, I do like both of them just because they're both very sleek and they're comfortable to hold on to. And you can still hold on to the brush at the top. It's not hot or anything but the only thing i found in terms of comfort and functionality with the handles is with the dyson all of your functions or your options are right here where you hold if you do hold it up at the top you can obviously hold it at the bottom which i think they prefer but sometimes i find myself holding it at the top and i find myself turning it off or i play around with the settings accidentally so that is the biggest flaw that i have found so far but it is only if you hold your brush at the top moving on to which one is the fastest i already talked about this the dyson is a lot by far faster drying than the revlon just because you have the different airflow settings with the heat so i did the high highest airflow with the lowest heat setting. So that resulted with a lot less air drying time versus the Revlon. Like I said, there's only three options. And with the airflow, if you do the lowest heat setting, the airflow is a lot less. So like I said, the Revlon kind of misses with that one. It kind of takes a little bit longer to dry. Let's talk about the safety regarding the heat settings. With the Revlon, it does have three options, the cool, low, and high. I always stick to the lowest heat setting just because the highest heat setting is so hot. I love that the Dyson has the technology integrated within the tool so it wouldn't get hot above a certain temperature. With the Revlon, I honestly have no idea. They obviously don't have any feedback loops regarding the temperature, so you don't know how hot or low it can get. 
So starting off with the Revlon, we held it for at least five minutes, both of them. And after five minutes, it was running around a little bit over 240 degrees Fahrenheit. With the Dyson, it was roughly around 210 to 12 degrees Fahrenheit. So obviously the Dyson is a lot less damaging on the hair regarding the temperature, it's always gonna be more stable. So let's talk about how loud they are at each different airflow setting or the heat setting for the Revlon. So my mic is right here. Hello. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn on the lowest heat setting. So it's not too loud, it's comfortable, it's nice. Let's turn on the Dyson with the lowest airflow. So let's turn on, they don't have a medium, setting solution on the highest. And then with the Dyson, they have a medium air shot and then they have the highest. So let's turn on the medium. And then this is their highest. Not that much of a difference. So Andre is looking at the DB level on the camera to see the noise level. And then Dyson is a little bit less on the highest compared to the Revlon. So it is a little bit less loud. So which one would I recommend? I think they're both great. If you are on a budget and you only want a volumizer styler that will dry and style your hair at once, definitely get yourself a Revlon. You will not be disappointed. You can't go wrong with this. So many people bought this and they can't say enough good things about it. It is amazing and it's an incredible tool, especially if you have shorter hair and you don't like using a blow dryer and then an extra brush to style your hair. This is an amazing option. But if you are in the market for more versatility and more options and more technology, the Dyson, it takes the cake. It is an incredible product. There is nothing like this on the market. Do I recommend it? Yes, if you are in the market for this type of tool or product. It is very, very pricey, but in my opinion, it's definitely worth it but so is this. So you can't really go wrong with either one depending what kind of budget you have. So that completes the one-to-one -one brush <laughs> head-on battle, which one did better. And I love them both. Let me know which one you guys liked better, which one you guys have and why you love it. But for now, thank you so much for watching, spending time with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.